Why morality? Because a lot of us come to medicine because of moral reasons. We feel we have a vocation or a mission, not only to care for the sick, but to care for the whole person, body and soul, and to witness to the highest values. Being informed, having free choice is important. A lot of the medical decisions we make will, the consequences of those someday will be gone. And there are things that endure. So, uh, the religious believe that these things will last even longer than our bodies. It's also um, good to remember the, the meaning of the word doctor, which, become, which is really teaching. And, and so, uh, whenever you teach, there are moral values involved. I think these days, a lot of us would be led to believe that if we use our, our ethics in making decisions, that it becomes subjective. Um, and because different people can have different ethical opinions. But I would make the case that using some sort of ethical standard increases objectivity, not decreases objectivity. Because without ethical standards, informed consent can degenerate into a means for obtaining whatever an individual comes to desire. So coming back to our first case, and this is a call that is not totally uncommon to see in general practice. What about this case? I've been asked to speak about my experience in promoting the fundamental right to life when it's threatened by a patient decision. This kind of scenario is, is more common than the request to refer or perform surgical abortion. I can't tell you in that case of request to refer for surgical abortion that few things are more satisfying in practice than caring for a child whose mother had initially requested referral for abortion, particularly when that mother brings that child in to your family and she's sitting there, actually It could just be an infected ear, but you think about this. So in the case of someone calling asking for the morning after fellow, I think in providing informed consent, the first thing that we need to say is that this medication interrupts human life. The second thing that one could say is that I entered medicine to promote it, not interrupt you. And regarding consent, freedom, that while I would not force a patient to undergo a treatment that made her pregnant, I also, from my standpoint, should not be forced to provide a treatment that interrupts her. This is a much more common scenario. And it should be stated from a practical standpoint that if someone has, a provider has a moral objection to performing medical treatment, that uh, particularly that's not common to do. That it's good to involve their front office and in the case of the residency their supervisors in advance so that this kind of situation is not more common than it needs to be. And people can get upset if they have an expectation coming in to get something and they're not going to get it. So, you know, I, I think that, uh, for example, in my clinic, people who schedule patients know that I am not going to do certain things. And therefore, when people call asking for those, those things, you know, they're, they're redirected. Um, but it still happens sometimes. And the first thing I'd say is, to some extent, and this would really be the subject for another talk, uh, the situation for birth control pills is similar to the morning after pill. I'm not saying pill, but there is some overlap. Other information that I think people need to know that's not in common though is that this medication can adversely affect relationships. There is some data out there that people who use contraception can have 
higher rates of marriage not lasting. And I'll talk about another technique that does not share that. There is evidence linking hormones, birth control hormones, to breast and cervical cancer. From 1980 to 2010, the number one female cancer in the world, breast cancer, rose 250 percent. The number two female cancer in women, cervical cancer, rose 120 percent in the same period. There are publications that make the case that this is due to birth control. And I think people need to know that. People don't know that. They really need to have that information and make a choice in their health care. There are alternative treatments that the patient is free to consider and that, in my case, I do provide. And I do share that with people. Particularly in this case, natural family planning. If the patient still chooses to obtain the pill, there are numerous providers easily found to provide it. A word about natural family planning. It's the only uniquely human form of birth control because it requires rational judgment by the users. You know, you have to think about what's going on in your body and decide, okay, well, is this a fertile time or is this not a fertile time? Every use of family planning involves a family planning choice. Every use of natural family planning involves a family planning choice. Um, is this a time when we would want to conceive? Um, that's not possible if one has been on medicine that renders one fertile for the month, or if one's had a procedure that renders, renders one fertile for life. There's, there's really no choice to conceive in that situation. And because natural family, involve, natural family planning involves the reason and the will, it's the only method that cooperates entirely with human nature. Human nature being an intellect of free will. Animals can't use it. You can't tell them to you know, observe their signs of fertility and to not have intercourse during the fertile time. They're incapable of doing that. Um, anyone who's ever been on a farm background would see that you know how things are done there when reproduction is desired and when it's not desired. Uh, Another way to look at this is try to put a vasectomy app on your iPhone. Okay, iPhone, you know, it's the information age, right? But, you know, a vasectomy doesn't really require, other than the technical skill required to perform it, the use of the intellect by the users. Um, and something that is not common knowledge that I think patients really deserve to hear when they're making reproductive choices is that there are scientific advances that have increased effectiveness of natural planning planning to 90% range with select methods. This is something that I've heard my friends come in and say to the office. And, uh, definitely that's a difficult situation. And certainly I've heard others come in, many others come in also. And uh, it's usually phrased like this. So that's why I put that ver verbiage in medical talk. It's a bit of a shock sometimes when hearing it. And, and you know, I, if you've never thought twice about that, I think it's worth at least thinking about. It. But um, if you've ever seen a situation where there's a family and the father has a vasectomy, and within a year, and I can think of two cases right now in my practice, they're having an affair because the consequences are reduced. Uh, Sterilization also can affect relationships. And it goes back to the data on there being higher rates of marital long-lasting life with these natural family planning, but not with other methods. I tell patients that some alternatives for family planning do not involve surgical risk. And I certainly tell people that it's not a method that I would choose for myself because Patients do want to know what we would like to do. Uh, certainly, in my training, I was told, "Well, you can hold these beliefs, but you know, you need to just get these people to where they can get what they want." And and 
that was that was the verbiage used to me, not the verbiage I used. Uh, but uh, I think it's worth saying a word about referring against ethical standards. To some degree, when we refer, we are involved with the act. That, and, I, and I've not always been this strong in this regard, but I really do now not refer for anything that I don't personally do, unless it's just above my technical skill level. Uh, but uh, violations of integrity are more obvious when illustrated by what we today consider to be socially not acceptable. For example, the slave hunters requesting a blacksmith to make shackles. What if the blacksmith said, well, I won't make handcuffs for him, but if you go down the road, John Smith does blacksmith and work on the side. Uh, or in the case of the frat boy requesting ketamine, which you may know is a date rate drug, before homecoming. Well, I won't prescribe it, but I do know a physician with much lower ethical standards who will do anything for money. Here's a note that I'll give you that you can tell them that I authorized you to get that. I owe those examples to John. There are other challenges, other ethical challenges out there. Plenty of them today. Challenges or opportunities. Drug seeking, I mentioned the part about uh, more youth using controlled substances than illicit substances. And I've seen patients, uh, other providers that I work with, I won't say how closely I, I work with those providers, but I've seen patients of those providers die from accidental narcotic overdose. It is a leading cause of accidental death. Um, and it's, it's one of the top ones. I can't pull that number up for you right now. But it's one of the top ones. Also, actions or omissions to hasten death, euthanasia. These are, you might be familiar with the original Hippocratic Oath. Euthanasia is a violation of Hippocratic tenets. Probably because it blurs the line between physician as healer and physician as lord of life and death. Or, as might come to be the case, not Lord, but secondary instrument of the state. As my residency director said, he said, we don't agree with everything you do. I'm speaking to you. No, we don't agree with all the things you decide not to do in medicine. But we do know that if you are true to your moral compass, then we can trust you to do other things that we feel good. And so integrity, doing what you feel you right is very important. And it also improves fortitude, the, the moral fiber. You know, when, you're, you, when you have to do tough things that people aren't ready to do that maybe are not entirely popular, it becomes quite easy to say, well, I'm not going to give you that antibiotic because you're a virus. You know, it's amazing how many notes I see where it's written viral infection and then they get an antibiotic. Or here's an antibiotic just in case. Every year there's millions of unnecessary antibiotics, this is well documented, that are ordered and we have all this antibiotic resistance. And there are procedures, particularly diagnostic procedures, that are done and they get us in the kind of situation where healthcare is so expensive that we feel like there aren't many alternatives. We have to radically change our economic system in order 